Mysteries in the West. 3. The Head of Wisdom. This day and that alike you do within your garden spend, neglectful of the nightingale, the crow your chosen friend. Yet such companionship must leave its trace upon your soul. Do you think fire shall cease to burn, or oil and water blend? Divan of Bedil, Johnson Pasha's translation. When they were suppressed, the Knights Templar were accused of worshipping a head, sometimes called the Baphomet. This was considered to be an idol, and probably connected with Muhammad, Mahomet. The head was described, but no head which could positively be identified as one of these Baphomets could be located. Probably relying upon contemporary Eastern sources, Western scholars have recently supposed that Baphomet has no connection with Muhammad, but could well be a corruption of the Arabic Abu Fihamat, pronounced in Moorish Spanish something like Bufihimat. The word means father of understanding. In Arabic, father is taken to mean source, chief seat of, and so on. In Sufi terminology, Raz al Fahmat, head of knowledge, means the mentation of man after undergoing refinement, the transmuted consciousness. It will be noted that the word knowledge, understanding, used here is derived from the Arabic FHM root. FHM, in turn, is used to stand both for FHM and derivatives, meaning knowledge, and FHM and derivatives standing for black, Coleman, and so on. The Baphomet is none other than the symbol of the completed man. The black head, negro head or Turk's head, which appears in heraldry and in English country inn signs, is a crusader substitute word or cant word for this kind of knowledge. It may be noted that the shield of Hugues de Payen, the founder, with Bisol de Saint-Omer, of the Templars in 1118 AD, carried three black human heads the heads of knowledge. The use of this term, especially the wondrous head theme, recurs throughout medieval history. Pope Gerbert, Sylvester II, who studied in Moorish Spain, is stated to have made a brazen head, among many other marvellous magical things. He is said to have introduced Arabic numerals into northern Europe in 991 from Saracen Spain. Albertus Magnus spent 30 years making his marvellous brass head. Thomas Aquinas, pupil at the time to Albertus, smashed the head, which talked too much. The head appears again and again. It should be remembered that the Templars and graduates of the Spanish magical schools had one thing in common, apart from being suspected of heresy and magical powers belonging to secret organisations. They all spoke and used Arabic. By means of this initiatory language, they could communicate with one another, pass punning messages, put up signs like the Bat of Mallorca to illustrate some message. This artificial head is not made of brass. Artificial it is, in that it is the product of work in the Sufic sense. Ultimately, of course, it is the head of the individual himself. At least one chronicler gets close to the mark when he says that the head was flesh and blood like unto an ordinary man's. The emphasis which is put on the statement, however, leads the ordinary reader to the conventional idea of artificiality and, like a good conjuring trick, diverts attention from the method of making the head which might be suspected if it were thought that head was a code word for the result of a heretical formative process. In Arabic, brass is spelled sufur, connected with the concept of yellowness. The head of brass is a rhyming homonym for head of gold, which is spelled in exactly the same way. The golden head, saritalai, is a Sufi phrase used to refer to a person whose inner consciousness has been 
transmuted into gold by means of Sufic study and activity, the nature of which it is not permissible to convey here. The three heads of black wisdom on the shield of the founder of the Templars are shown on a background of gold, on gold three moors' heads black. The phrase, I am making a head, used by dervishes to indicate their Sufic dedication in certain exercises, could very well have been used by Albertus Magnus or Pope Sylvester and transmitted in the literal sense, believed to refer to some sort of artefact. Albertus Magnus, born 1193, was well versed in the Saracenic and Sufi literature and philosophy. As Professor Brown notes, he exceeded the usual customs of Western Orientalists for, dressed as an Arab, he expounded at Paris the teachings of Aristotle from the works of Al-Farabi, Ibn Sina, Avicenna, and Ghazali.